When did you realise you wanted to be an artist and that you could do it full time? I think I wanted to be an artist from a quite a young age, like four or something. But I'm not sure I ever really realised I could do it full time, even though I well, I thought I knew I could, but it, even now it feels like something that could go away at any moment. So it's not, it's something I try not to take for granted. I've always loved painting and drawing particularly. Um, I drew a lot when I was younger. And probably the kind of point where I thought I'd like to do this all of the time um, was when I made my first oil painting. I think it was in 1996, 95, around then, I think I was 11, 12, and um, realising that other people could relate to something that I had made was quite big um, and made me want to make more. Can you tell us about your recent work? I got to mix uh, sculpture, landscape and architecture in this film that also is a briefing between circles and squares where you inhale circle and exhale square and it's almost a meditation form. If you follow the the circle and square meditation, the briefing, you can get a bit of what I'm trying to do with this work. But for me, it's a, it's a meditation on landscape, sculpture and architecture together. My recent work takes the form of um, paintings in various manifestations, nudes I've made in the studio, um, objects, people of some paintings of people that I've met in chat rooms. So I make them online when um, I'm engaged in a conversation with them, and I've made some sound works and sound performances recently. I made figurative paintings based around East Africa. Our exhibition, Invisible Hours, concerns mainly the hours we spend after school, after our studying, after work, engaging with different projects. Were you engaged in any extracurricular activities while you were studying? I didn't sort of go and play basketball in the between the classes or like take a break and had like some chess games going on at the side. I think it was more like the um, curricular activities or art school uh, tended to dominate my whole life uh, to an increasing sense um, throughout sort of like my my study time and I didn't really like draw a line in between what was my sort of curriculum and what which wasn't I started to sort of try and make work and show work in a context outside of the school world quite early on where I was interested in how uh, what I did could like operate in the world as opposed to just in a seminar room or classroom or something like that. I used to work with video and I was to make uh, some institutional videos and also fashion videos and that was my my extracurricular activity uh, making yeah commissioning videos for brands and other people, um, other artists sometimes, and I loved working with other artists, I loved to make the work of another, trying to find out the intention of another artist, it was very pleasing for me to work with other artists, I think it's a big school, you know, you learn so much more than you learn in art school. I was very involved in a music scene in Glasgow where I did my BA, and I was in a couple of bands there which I was really excited about at the time. Sport, music, painting. That's, that's a good one. All right, let's try it. 
Um, did any of your tutors or fellow artists ever give you advice that had a major impact on your work? There's no one piece of advice or one thing that's had a major impact, I don't think. But various people, um, tutors and quotes from other artists have stuck with me, I suppose. But I think I like to reserve the right to break any of those rules or break any of those um, meanings of those quotes. There's one thing that I like that Philip Guston said, which was that he tried to think and do at the same split second, and I like that idea. I think that for me, as a postgraduate art history student, it was an advice that Professor Walter Mignolo, who's an Argentinian decolonial thinker, um, once gave me. He told me that whenever you produce academic work, you can never claim for it to be objective and universal knowledge, because as a human being, you're implicated in a set of intellectual and moral and cultural values. Um, which condition the way you think about art, you perceive art, you uh, write eventually about art. So I think this is the one advice I've really kept whenever I produce academic work. I think to define three important things in my life is quite hard and for me to say that it was something art related would feel a bit weird because I think the most important thing is to get through life at the moment and to maybe to get through university. Um, whether those things help my practice or not I don't know but I would say those are the kind of most important things to yeah basically make it through life and make it through university. If you could exhibit your work anywhere, online or offline, where would it be? I like public gallery spaces that are free to get into. And my question to you would be just a really simple one. What's, what excites you? What makes you want to make art? So during first year, um, I became really interested in puppetry. I was writing an essay on Suti. And one of my friends told me about the Little Angel Puppet Theatre. So I began ushering there and it just blew my mind. I had a totally new perspective on my work and the potential of puppetry. After that, I've been using puppetry in my work in animations and in shows.